Hallelujah. Do you all have a good time this afternoon? Yes? Yes. I have a good time as well. So the title of my sermon this afternoon called The Word of God Will Bear Fruit. The Word of God Will Bear Fruit. So in life, we want to see fruit that comes out of us, right? And some, many times, we're eager to see, come on, when will I have fruit? In 1994 and going to 95, I was about to graduate from the university, and I'm looking to get a job. You know, at that time, I got a job as a night guard. You know, my friend, actually, he doesn't need a guard to get his house. But he wanted to provide some income for me. <laughs> so he, he made me and my friend, you know, make me and my friend to be his guard. And most of the time, we don't guard for him. We just sleep. <laughs> so this one day, you know, this one night, the thieves come, you know, broke through the lock and get into the, to the property and steal one of the guard's motorbike. <laughs> so the thief stole one of my friend's motorbike. And then when we wake up in the morning, we didn't see the motorbike. And we see the gate was open widely. And, uh, you know, and uh, we don't know. So we go to the landlord, my friend, that we got for him. So what should we do? Now we lost our motorbike. You need to help us buy the bike. <laughs> you know, buying the bike for us. So a guard, supposed to guard everything. And the guard lost the motorbike, and the guard asked the master to pay for the bike that was lost. <laughs> that was silly, you know. But, you know, <laughs> that was silly. But at that time, the master was so nice. He is so nice. He doesn't look to our behavior, but he has loved toward us. And then he gave us some money. And, you know, and contribute to buy another motorbike for my friend that, you know, uh, you know, that was stolen. So I learned something. So at that time, you know, we generate income and I, I feel good about it because that was the fruit that I get to have some money to support myself while living in Phnom Penh. After I graduated, I was supposed to be a high school teacher but I didn't get to do that. But I started a business, and business generate income. I was so joyful. And later on, I bought a ring, you know, and to keep reminded myself, the Lord had blessed me with a new job. So that I have a ring, I didn't wear that ring today. But, you know, everyone in life, they're looking to see the fruit that comes out of them. Are you? Are you looking for a fruit? Yes? Yes, I believe everyone. So, but the word of God can help you to bear fruit. So in the book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active. It's not just a word. Sometimes when we speak the word, oh, it's just a word. But this word, the word of God, it's God's word. It's God. The word was with God. God, the word is God. And that word is alive and active. So when you read the word, when everyone read the word, open up the Bible and think about it. This is not just a word. But this is a word that live and active. Sharper than any double-edged it is sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrows. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Wow. If you want to see, you want to set aside, and we want to understand more stuff in life, we got to go to the Word of God. Because this Word of God is so clear. Is so sharp when this word of God proclaimed, when this word of God spoken, that that word separated things. Oh, that one is not God. This one is of God. 
That one no need to be here, need to be thrown away. This one need to keep. This is the word of God. So think about it. Something that is alive. Something is active. Can you imagine? Think about it. You yourself. Alive and active. For 30 days, you got locked in the room. For 30 days, you don't go nowhere. Could you imagine? Could you do that? Just locked in the room. Or stuck in your bed, you can move nothing. Could go nowhere. Could you imagine? You feel bad. How come? I'm alive. I'm not dead. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to go here. I need to go there. Because this body is alive. Something that is alive, you can't keep it just there. So, something that is living, alive, and active, we cannot put in the cage, right? In the boxes. Sometimes, some believer, when they hear the word of God, they just keep it in the box. So, oh, it's just the word of God. That word is not for me. That word is for somebody else. Oh, yeah, that word is for the person who was sick. Oh, that word is the person who was lack. Oh, this word is just like this. This word is just like that. It's not for me. So we keep that word in the box. Sometimes Christian put the word of God in the box. Sometimes, oh, yeah, it's just a word. Okay, I just read the word. Okay. Oh, as for me, a Christian, I need to read the word. Because I'm a believer, I need to read the word. Okay, in the beginning, God do this, God do that, God do that. Okay, oh, it's time for me to go to work. I need to go to work. And the word of God, just put in the cage of the Bible. Just stuck in the Bible. It does not having any positive influence in the person who is reading the word of God. It's just reading. And the word just in the Bible. Some of the word when people hear the word. Oh yeah, that pastor. Oh, he, he, he don't know how to speak, man. He don't know how to speak the word of God. Oh yeah, this pastor is better. Oh, that pastor is not so good. Oh yeah, the, today the word of God, it touched my heart or something like that. Oh yeah, it, that's a good word today. It's a good word. But the word just stuck in the church. <laughs> Sometimes, right? The box of the church. The word of God have heard people, heard the word of God, and the word of God have stuck in the church. Stuck in the room. Sometimes, some other word, when people heard it, they keep piling up the word of God. Just put in the heart. Just leave it there. Just leave it there. Just leave it there. Just leave it there. I don't know about you, but these are the experiences that I have myself come to the word of God. This might apply to some people because this word is alive. This word is active. This word has power. Do not keep it in the box. Do not keep it in the church. Do not just keep it in the heart. Allow this word of God to live. Allow this word of God to flow out of the church. Allow this word of God to flow out, out of this heart and bear fruit for our lives. Right? Right? Yes. We need to allow this word that is so sharp. It's even sharper than the double-edged sword. The sword is not just to fight, you know, it's to protect and to, you know, to, to put the enemy away. When the enemy see the sword, enemy afraid. But we need to know how to use the word. We don't stab each other, but we stab, we fight against the enemy because we have the word. We have the sword within us. When the enemies come, enemy, you can come, I have the word of God. Enemy, you can come, I have the sword that is so sharp. You cannot come and do any harm to me. You cannot come and do any harm to my people, my family, because I have the sword. I have the word of God 
this sword and the word of God is alive and active. It's so alive and active, you have no right to come in. No right to come in and touch us. Because this word going to come out of me. It's not going to be here. It's not going to be just in the church. But the word of God going to go out to protect me, protect my family, protect everything. This is the word of God. Her power is a life in active, right? Don't keep anything alive and active in the cage. Therefore, our new life fellowship, I believe that every one of us, we don't want to put the word just in the church. We don't want to put the word just in our heart. We put the word of God in the lampstand so that the people around us can see the light, right? Can see the light can see the hope, can see the world. The world is different when they see the light, right? The world is different when they see the light, and the light of God is shining and showing what is right, what is wrong. In Luke 8, 16, no one light a lamb and hides it, it in a, a clay jar or put it under the bed. Instead, they put it on the stand so that those who come in can see the light. When they come in, they can see the light. And the Bible said, you and I, our believers, are the light of this world. Are the light of this world. Anywhere that we go, we carry the light of this world with us. For the world that live in the darkness, when they see us, they feel uncomfortable. They feel convicted. They feel something is different. And they start to see, oh my goodness, how come I did this? How come I did that? I need to behave. I need to change. I need to make it right. When we have this word, when we put the word in the lampstand, we don't put the word in the cage, in the box, right? I believe. That people, my brothers and sisters, that come to worship and believe in God, don't want to put the word in the cages. Don't put the word under the bed, but put the word on the lampstand to light up the whole house. Can you imagine a little bit? The other day, as I spent time with the Lord, I thought about it. But I look at the, the census. The government just had, you know, the census like, what, four months ago, five months ago? You know, the census of the Cambodian people live in Cambodia, the population of Cambodian people. The, 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 the census shows that more than two million people live in the city of Phnom Penh. More than two million. Not even uh, two millions and a half. Less than two millions and a half. And how many people come to worship? At New Life Fellowship for all the five services. When we look at it, at least 2,700 people. We have like what? Like 1% percent in it? Yeah? We have a lot. Wow. We have a lot. Can you imagine all of those 2,700 people? They light up. They use the light. They don't hide the word in the hat. They don't put the word in the cage, in the boxes. This city will light up with the light of God. And you will see life start to come alive. Dead things start to come alive. This city will have hope, hope in God. Because the light is shining. I believe every one of us could do that, right? Every one of us could shine to the world around us. Because... They need this light. Look at some more in the word of God. Go to John chapter 15, verse 1 to 7. I, Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He said, I am a true vine. He is the main. He is the source of everything. Because in that culture, he, he make it comparison for people to... 
uh, know to understand. And my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bear no fruit. Any branch that bear no fruit, the father cut it off. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruit. God believed in you. God believed in me that every one of us will bear fruit and not just bear fruit, will bear much fruit. But sometimes, many times, people don't believe in themselves that they can bear fruit. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we could bear fruit. God believes in us that we will bear more fruit. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Wow, 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 wow. Only hear the word, receive the word, and the conscience start to get cleaner. Wow, you already clean. Because I speak the word I spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. God said, stay with me. Stay here. Don't go anywhere. Connect it with me. You connect with me. You stay with me. You will bear fruit. As I remain in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Oftentimes, people satisfy with their fruit. But I tell, I tell you, it's not enough yet. So how come, how much? How much is enough? How much? Come to the standard of fruitfulness in God's eyes. It's important. Of course, we bear fruit in life. We get to do great things all the time. We want to do good. We want to do good things. We get to do good things all the time. But do we do the fruit? Get to do the fruit, produce the result, a godly result that God wants us to do or not. So therefore, remain in God. He said, "I am the vine, and you are the branches." If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. He keeps telling and telling and telling again and again and again. Remain. Stay with me. Remain in me. Don't be apart from me. Stick to me. This is God. <clears throat> God is so good. God knows it clearly that we need to connect it with God. Bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing if you do not remain in me. You are like a branch that is thrown away and it's withered. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me. He keeps telling again and again about remain. Remain in me. I remain in you. It's like Wait a minute, minute, my sons and daughters. As for me, I am connected with you. You are ignoring me. You are ignoring me that I'm in you. Come on, stay connected with me. I am with you. Come on, I'm believing in you. I believe that you can do it. Come on, stay connected with me. And then you will bear fruit and you will bear much fruit. More than what you are desiring for. And he said, remain in me as I, uh, if you remain in me, and my word remain in you, as whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. What is our wishes in this life? We have so long list, like a shopping list, right? <laughs> like a shopping list. When we go, oh, God needs this, God needs that, needs this, needs that. You know, tick, 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 tick. It's like every one of us have a long list. But let me tell you, God have a longer list of blessing to us more than the list that we have for God. So don't worry about it. Just 
stay connected to the brand. I mean, to the vine. Look at, you know, let's, let, 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 they have some, a little bit Bible study. You know, just think a little bit. The branches must respect and honor the vine. Right? Need to connect it with the vine. Whatever we do. Sometimes the hot weather, the cold weather, you know, not enough water or whatever. Sometimes trials, tribulation come into our lives. Always remind ourselves that we are connected with the source. We are connected with the vine. The branches must love the vine. Love the vine. Because the branches cannot live without the vine. The branches did not produce fruit by itself, right? No fruit, no fruit, unless the branches connected to the vine. So therefore, stay connected to the vine. The branches carry fruit for the vine. Sometimes, oh, look at what I've done. Oh, I just did this. Oh, yeah, I'm really good at this. Oh, I'm really good at that. Oh, yeah, me. Yes, us. But we just carry the fruit for the vine. Oh, I bear this fruit because he gives me the ability to do this. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you, Jesus, I can sing because he gave me the voice to sing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the brain that you have given to me. So I am creative. I start this business. I start that business. I have consultant with this. I have with that because you have given me this ability. Thank you, Jesus. When you meet with people, you know what? You know what I done? I know to my vine. I, I know how to go to my vine. I connected to the source. My source is Jesus Christ. My Lord and my Savior, he can help me any time of need. He, asked, he told me that I can ask anything in his name, and he will give it to me. This is the result that I got from that request to my master. So the, the, the branches just carry it. You know, when you look at the house that you get, oh, yeah, nice house. Look at the cow, it's a nice car. Look at the husband, it's, oh, your husband is so handsome. Oh, your wife is so pretty. Oh, your daughter, you know, look like this, look like that. But by the grace of God, God have given to us. My children might be, might be a little shy because people say, Pastor, your, your, your kid's so cute, so adorable. You know, I have more kids, Pastor. <laughs> and my wife said, no. And so, <laughs> anyway... <clears throat> Yeah, but I mean, sometimes feel, you feel good, feel, you know, feel good. Oh, yeah. Oh, your, your kids know how to behave. Oh, you're such a good parent. And then I start to feel like, oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know, but it's not right. You know, God gave me the ability to lead, to manage my family. All of this belong to God. I should say, by the grace of God, I could do this. I'm just a branch that carry the fruit for Jesus, right? They carry this fruit for Jesus. And, uh, yeah, when we feel lacked or anything like that, like I, just say, I said, when we have trials and tribulation and we have a need of this, a need of that, remind ourselves it's not there yet. Come on. It will be done to us. So everything we do, in this life. Every decision we decided to make and stuff, think about it. Is this thing aligned with the word of God? Am I connected to the vine or not? Maybe I should pray a little bit first before I decide to do this, before I decide to do that. Go to the vine first before you decide to have a fruit. What kind of fruit? Did God talk about it? I believe there are so many fruit that come out of this. But the fruit I'm thinking about is the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, so that this is a fruit that comes out of God. This is a fruit that God has given to all of us as a believer. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love. How many people need love? All of us, right? Yeah, all of us. This fruit is love. Can you imagine any time of a day? You feel loved by God. When you're connected to the Father, when you're connected to the vine, you feel love. You feel safe. I'm in his love. You feel love because he's there with you and I any time. You feel love. Love. And then joys. Oh, joys, pastor. I owe a lot of money. I don't know how to come up. You know, I don't know what to do. Like, you know, the, uh, young people are going to have an exam, like what, tomorrow or something like that. Oh, pastor, I don't, I'm not good at math. I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. I'm going to fail 100%. How can I have joys? No way. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's really hard. But the joys is the fruit that comes out from within. And then that one starts to rise up. This one time, when I was in the exam as well, high school exam like that, and I saw lots of rich people sitting around me. And their family come and they try to give this, try to give that, and the teacher come and talk nicely, you know, at that time in the, what, in the 80s, you know, late 80s. And then I feel like, I feel lonely. I don't know what to do. I feel sad. How come my father and mother are not rich like them? You know? And they have a lot of people come by and be, you know, loving on them. And I don't have joys at all. And I lost everything. And I, I don't know what to do. But as I thought a little bit, I calmed myself down. And I start to remember the thing that I have learned a long time ago. And then I start to produce some good answer. You know, oftentimes we try to, to solve any problem quickly or right away. Without, you know, when we see that thing is too big for us, we cannot find joys. But when the joys come from the within, from inside, through the word of God, and allow space a little bit. And we start to see, start to pick up, oh yeah, we can do this. Oh, we can do that. You know, and then joys start to come out. Produce joys. Love, joys, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithful, gentleness, self-control. Against such thing, there's no law. Can you imagine you're married to a person? Do you have all of these qualifications? You know, your husband, you know, your wife always loves you. Your husband or your wife always joyful. Your husband or your wife always in peace, always patient, always kind toward you. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, my. <laughs> Going to be a wonderful marriage, isn't it? Right? Going to be a wonderful marriage. Or, you know, you, you have a, a children or anything like that, you know, and your son or your daughter, and have this qualification from the Word of God. It's doable, I believe, you know? I mean, we, we want to see this happen in our family, but it's doable. When we talk, when we teach, when we, you know, we love each other, we practice, use this, we will see the fruit that comes out of this. So, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have contained this fruit within us. This is a gift have already given to us. But sometimes we don't get to use it, right? We don't get to use it. No, it's stuck there in the word of God. It's stuck there in our heart. I know, I know, I know. I know that God say that, but yeah, but this, you know, but this thing I'm facing. I know, I know God say this, but you know, it's just, just like that. All of us, as a believer, these are ours. These qualifications are ours. It's there for us already, have been given to us. It's belonged to us already. But have we acknowledged it? Have we use it. I believe most of us use it to a certain degree. 
in a wizard's world. And so the word of God is an instruction for God, for all of us. It's like a road map for us to live our lives, you know, to the fullness that God has for us. Does God still speak? God does. God still speak. He speaks through the prof prophets. He speaks sometimes. He have an audio voices. You can hear. Sometimes he speaks through dreams. He speaks through the Bible. He speaks through people or your friend. He speaks to us all the time. Sometimes God even speaks to your children. You know, this one time, my daughter, oldest daughter, she's just four years old. She's four. And in our culture, the kids are too young. Their experiences is less than the adult, right? And so uh, the adult have more experiences. We proudly to say we know better than you. Kids, we know better. So this one day, my kid was coughing. You know, in Cambodian culture, Cambodian people, if people are coughing, peanut, no. Don't eat peanut, oh. You know, <laughs> don't eat peanut, you know, coughing. If you eat peanut, you, your kid will be coughing. And so Naomi was coughing, and uh, she said, Dad, I want peanut butter. I said, Naomi, I'm not going to give it to you. You are coughing. And Dad, peanut butter. I said, no, Naomi, no. You are coughing. You cannot eat peanut butter. Dad, peanut butter. I said, no, Naomi, no, no. You are coughing, you cannot eat peanut butter. You know what? Like a little later, after she calmed down, she tried to get something to eat, I get peanut butter for her. <laughs> and so, and she, she said, Dad, Dad, you are funny. I said, why is funny? Because she was thinking, like when she was asking me, I would say, no, 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 no. When she stopped asking, I give it to her. So then I, I didn't stick to my word. And then, and then I start to learn from her. I was like, oh, wait a minute. If I say no means no. And then my kid's not going to believe in me when I say no. <laughs> that I will say yes later. So I have to stick to my word. When I say no, it means no. Then the word of God, no means no. Yes means yes, right? That's the word of God. So now, now I, you know, I learned from young kids. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, <laughs> and I, the person I learned the most is just, just within, you know, learn from my wife, learn from my kids, learn from my people around us, and learn from the Bible. So it's important that we, as a believer, open up a spirit to receive from people. God might talk to certain kind of people, to us. So it means that, you know, so that we don't, not so proud of that person, not so educated. How dare you talk to me? I'm a this, I'm a dad, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, I'm a master degree holder, I'm a PhD or whatever. And no, God can talk to you through certain kind of people. Even God even used animals. Even God used nature to talk us. To us as well. So it's important to open a spirit to listen to our Lord. Because the word of God is so important. I have a couple points for us tonight, this afternoon. Come to know, wanting to know the word of God. Point number one. Just prepare. Prepare your heart. Prepare means what? It's get it ready. Get your heart ready. Matthew 13, 23. But the seed falling on the good soil. Good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces the crops, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what has sown. When you prepare, prepare the heart. When prepare the heart, we mean, God, whatever you do, my heart is ready. I'm preparing my heart. For when we prepare, the word of God fall 
and going to produce going to produce fruit. How do we prepare our heart? Maybe through prayer. Spend time with God. Maybe do some warfare. Say, God, that Cambodian preacher who's just Cambodian, I don't want to listen to you. No, I'm just kidding. I, mean, I don't want to listen to him. I believe it, you know, just teasing. So wake you up maybe in the afternoon. You know, everyone want to take a nap. Me too. <laughs> and so, I mean, just prepare. Pray. Is there any doubt in there? Doubt, you go away. When I come to church, I want to hear God is talking to me. When I open up the Bible or turn on the phone to the scripture and read it, and God, I want to be ready. God, help my heart to be ready. When I read it, it's not just a reading like a newspaper. But God, plan that seed of your word in my heart and help me to understand that word. Any doubt, any unbelief need to leave me alone in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you do warfare like that, it's, you will get the word in the heart. You know, you need to forgive some people. Sometimes you pray all of those prayers, and there's some people that do bad things. Employers, employees, relatives, or whatever. Oh, I hate that person. They always think like this about me. They always do that. Just unforgiveness could stop the heart from receiving the word of God as well. So God, help me to forgive this person. Or I choose to forgive that person. I choose to talk to that person. A um, couple of days ago, actually yesterday, you know, um, get on a grab a taxi in Singapore. And uh, I thought, you know, I need to, need to go quick. I'm, I have grace on a, on a guy. I want to help him. So, you know, my suitcase is a little heavy, like 15 kilos, you know. I'm a small guy. So <laughs> 15 kilos is a little heavy. So the man is not too big either. And so he picked the, the thing and put on his uh, trunk. And then I thought, I need to help this man. And I pick it up and push it a little bit. And it shifts. Have to, you know, the hood to cover the stuff. He said, be careful, be careful, be careful. It's not breaking anything. And my heart started to feel like, wait a minute. I didn't break anything. How come this man is like this? And I started to think about, maybe this man have a, a bad day. What should I do? And then start a little bit and pray a little bit. And going towards the airport. I said, sir, I believe you have a good day. I believe that. Thank you so much for driving safe. You have a wonderful day. He said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so when you sow something, some seed, sometimes my heart and their heart is kind of, you know, he did this to me. Maybe I'm not going to do that nice thing to him. No, but later on, when you go through, allow the Think that the process, allow the, the Lord helping us. I believe with that man to think a little bit after we say something nice to him. So, you know, sometimes we need to do that as well. Sometimes some, some sin, small sin, it's hurt us from preparing to receive the word of God as well. Sometimes we forget to meditate it because we read the word for the sake of reading, not the love for the sake of loving the word, wanting to learn from the, that word, allow that word to sink into our spirit. So when we prepare like that, I guarantee us, any time that we read the word, we will learn a lot. Years back, I learned a little bit. Like these people, they just sell their devotional book. They read the Bible and they write it down. They publish it. They call it a devotional book. And they make like millions of dollars. <laughs> it's just somebody reading the word of God. And write it down and send it to the printing house and call a devotional life. Look at it. You know, they make millions of dollars. Just from this. It's a fruit. I believe it's not just 
looking at the money, just looking at the food and what people wanting to learn more. But it is a place where we can learn more, which is the Bible, right? We can learn from other people. We can learn from devotional life kind of broken stuff, but we need to learn from the Bible. We all have the Bible. I love that power of the seed of God. Get in. The Word of God is so powerful. Sometimes, some heart, some ground, it's so hard. But when the Word of God come in, start to soften a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more and become the sword that produces fruit. Therefore, sometimes we don't know what area in our heart. Some people really stop burning <laughs> you know, in some area. And when the Word of God starts coming in, it's not stopping and stuff like that. Start to shift the thinking a little bit. Oh, I need to love on my wife more. Oh, I need to love on my husband more. Oh, I need to forgive this. I need to forgive that. That is the shift. When the Word of God starts to come in and change the condition of the soul. Change the condition of the heart as well. So point number one. For this word to be fruitful and produce fruit, just get a heart ready always. Point number two, make the word of God with faith. Go to Hebrew chapter four, verse one or two. Therefore, since the promise remains of entering his rest, let us feel less any of you seem to have come short of it. God give us rest. It's the rest coming to us. There's a promise. He said, for those who have a heavy burden, come and take his burden. He give us rest. It means like his word, it lifted us up. Lift out of burden. So, yeah, this word lift our burden. You know, the burden is not heavy for us anymore. Let us feel less of any of you seem to have come ashore afraid. Respect the word. If we not respect the word, maybe the word, just the word. And the word have no power to help us. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well. As to them, like the Israelites, many of them don't get to go to the promised land. They stuck in the wilderness. Because when they hear the word, they didn't mix that word. I'm going to finish reading. Um, preach to us as well, as to them. But the word which they heard did not prof profit them. Profit them. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. When they hear the word, when we hear the word, that word with the mix with faith. When they heard God say it, when Moses tell them, they just, oh, Moses say again, go to the promised land. It's too far, Moses. In Egypt is better. Everyone complained in Egypt. So when they left Egypt, on their way, then they, they didn't reach their destination yet. They complain. They say, come on, Moses. We want to go back. Just, 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 we just want to live here. The scriptures say, many of them have heard the word. It's just only the word to them. They didn't mix with faith. Therefore, they stuck in the wilderness. They can't go to the land of honey. They just stuck there, and they die there. Only a younger generation get to be at the promised land. The word is spoken to us through the Bible, through the prophet, through the preacher, or whatever. But that word will be used less when we don't mix it with faith. Hear from one ear, let it leave the other ear. Not it sinks down to the heart, but... The word will produce fruit when the word 
being mixed with faith. When we hear something, some word, don't respond quickly. Listen about it. Think about it. Mix a little bit with faith. Compare. Did God really say this? If I'm to do this, does this work or what? Think a little bit. I believe that God, you will experience a whole new level in your life when we hear the word and mix that word with the faith. My brothers and sisters, we bless to live in this generation. The generation that we get to access to the word of God with the hard Bible like this or like this or with the phone or whatever. With so many things, we get access to the word of God. Let us prepare our heart. Let's prepare the ground. Let the ground in Phnom Penh, let the ground in Cambodia, will be a good soil that will produce 160 and 30. And we prepare so that generations to come, they will benefit from this. I believe that we're blessed to live in this generation. Let prepare this as a foundation for our lives, as the foundation to prepare for the life to come. I believe when that in a foundation is placed in our heart and in the heart of all the members of New Life and all the heart of believers in Phnom Penh, in Cambodia, we will see a new generation come. We will benefit. We will see this fruit from the word of God. And the fruit will bear much fruit. Amen. Could we stand, my brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me respond to this word a little bit. You heard me say, but allow it. Not just my word only. Just God. Let that word sing in my spirit. Let that word produce fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let that word soften some hard sword in our heart. Hallelujah. Let a heart prepare for the word. Hallelujah. Let the word mix with faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, she did be bidding on a no, 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 have heard these words, Lord. Lord God, use this word to come out, Lord God. Not stay in the cage. Not stay in the church. Not stuck in the heart, Lord God, in our heart. But let this word, let God go out and be the light and touch lives around us, Lord God. Lord God, we want to see fruit come out of these words, Lord God. Thank you so much, Lord God. Help us to be a good stewardship, Lord God, to these words, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sons and your daughters, Lord God, this week. Help them to be overjoyed and overflow with contagious with the people around them. Lord God, bless them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. Hallelujah for coming this afternoon.
If you need prayer, our team are ready to pray for you. Say, God bless you. Have a wonderful week, my brothers and sisters.